I truly appreciate your time. I am Pius Kojo Baka. And look now at our stories. Deputy Finance Minister in charge of revenue, Dr. Alex Apambe, says government is working at reviewing some tax handles to help improve the investment environment. This is said is to ensure that Ghana or Ghana remains the best destination for offshore investors. Now, speaking at the Ghana Investment Promotion Center third quarter Ghana Club 100 Chief Executive Breakfast Meeting and also the launch of the 21st Ghana Club 100 Awards, he called for a strategic collaboration for all sector players to ensure a sustained economic growth. Here's a report. Deputy Finance Minister at the event said government is embarking on several initiatives to improve the investment space to drive economic growth. He called on other private sector players to support government quest in ensuring stability. We believe that leveraging strength of both the public and private sectors will accelerate our economic recovery and foster sustainable development. The nature of finance is thus actively working to create an enabling environment for businesses. A recent engagement with stakeholders in May 2024 to discuss how we can improve Ghana's business climate and improve the ease of doing business acknowledges investors' concerns about Ghana's complex tax system. In response to our collaborating with the Ghana Revenue Authority to streamline and revise administrative processes associated with tax administration, and this will not only end with administrative processes, we are also looking to assess and revise the entire tax system, including reviewing some of the tax handles in the country. And it's interesting to know when I got here this morning, the first message I got from CEO is, when is my tax exemptions going to be? It clearly shows the concerns for businesses. As On this part, Chief Executive Office of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center UOFI Grant highlighted Ghana's strategic positioning in attracting foreign investment despite the current global economic challenges. To enhance collaboration and partnership between government and the private sector, GIPC has been hosting these quarterly CEO breakfast meetings. These meetings serve as a platform for Ghana, welcoming both local and foreign businesses. In line with our steadfast commitment to making Ghana an attractive destination for investment, the GIPC and government in general has implemented a series of reforms aimed at simplifying the business registration process, enhancing transparency, and reducing bureaucratic hurdles. Additionally, it's our desire to make Ghana much more attractive um, and making sure that we are able to fuel our own indigenous businesses in partnership with foreign direct investment. And we are seeing some positivity there as well. These efforts have seen Ghana ranked as the most appealing destination for investments in West Africa, according to the Deloitte 2022 Africa Investment Attractiveness Index. The Ghana Investment Promotion Center says Ghana has made significant strides in terms of political stability, infrastructure development, and pro-business policies, making it an attractive hub for foreign investment. James Eshen's report for Joy Business. All right, so let's have a discussion on the move by government to review some tax handles to help improve the investment environment. And joining us via Zoom to help us appreciate that is a tax consultant, Francis Timoboy. Francis Timoboy, thanks so much for joining me on Business Life. Um, how feasible is this move by the Deputy Finance Minister in charge of re revenue, especially when we all know it wasn't captured in the media budget review? Great, because um, we had the option of introducing it in the media budget. So unless the changes are very minimal and it doesn't require parliamentary or legislative approval, it looks like we may not be able to introduce any major tax reform, especially because we are in election year. And you know, mostly in election years, we have that transitional period where it is just uh, appropriation in advance that is presented to parliament somewhere October, because there's this anticipation that a new government is coming to take over. So 
um, the time at this moment, it doesn't look like we can influence or implement any major reform, as the minister has said. Possibly, maybe he's looking at it as, as, a, as a going concern, so that maybe 2025, whoever takes over will look at it. And I think that I will agree with him because the tax system that we have in Ghana over the period, most businesses believe that it is not friendly, especially if you look at the indirect taxes. Look at the way the COVID and then the levies have been structured. Um, it doesn't make business friendly. So if there's a, a long-term plan to uh, make changes to it, I think I'm for it. But looking at the time from now up to maybe election year, this government may not have enough time to even get parliamentary approval for any major tax reform. I see. So um, which tax handles, realistically, in your view, can be reviewed if indeed, um, as the minister is saying, it's anything to go by, uh, go by really, what, what do you think which tax handles can be looked at? No, for me, I think the business community have been very loud and clear. They say that COVID-19 should go, COVID-19 levy should go. Um, however, if you look at the amount that COVID-19 contributes, I think 2024, we are expecting about 5.6 billion cities. And that's a huge amount of money. I think that it's even more than um, e-levy and then the communication service tax combined. So the question is, can government take it off? It should go, but if it goes, it means that government must look for other avenues to fill that gap because of the way Ghanaian accept, Ghanaians accepted the COVID-19 levy. We all thought that it's going to help uh, alleviate the, the expenses that has been created. And if it is no more in the system, then it should go. Government will have to struggle to balance the equation to see how do I take it off? And if I take it off, what am I going to bring? If you look at some taxes that have been introduced, for example, the emission levy, it's not going to bring much revenue. And mm. so taking COVID-19 off is what business communities are calling for. But if they put it off or they, they pull it off the tax handles, what are you going to rep what are you going to use to replace it can create a huge, you know, pothole in government revenue. I think he levied to people have been calling for it. And we have seen the government, the two uh, major opposition parties saying that it, it will go because uh, they think that it's not a proper tax. Many Ghanaians have calling, are calling for a, a, whole lot of, a whole lot of them. For me, I think that the way the structure of the Get Fund and NHL uh, 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 were implemented in, in August 2018, we should go back to the old system. Let's just go back and make all those ones deductible input tax because 6% of every purchase, every uh, goods or services that businesses in care, if you allow them to, you know, make it as a cost to them, this is a very huge expenditure to them. And it's, it has a cascading effect. So let's go back to, you know, those old system and restructure it. And then it makes more business friendly environment for businesses to thrive. And it's good you've mentioned the e-levy. And of course, we know that the total value of mobile money transaction witnessed some significant jump ending June this year. Well, the Bank of Ghana data puts the amount at 1.2 trillion Ghana cities. And this is significant, isn't it? Despite the fact that we are seeing um, e-levy not contributing much when it comes to revenue mobilization. It is. And I was listening to some new news items where Ghanaian, some of them were saying that in order to bypass the system, they try to adopt some other innovative ways. So when a tax is not popular, I think that governments will have to take a decision to see how they can deal with it. But going forward, do you foresee the e-levy, as you rightly mentioned, that maybe opposition party, um, sh uh, when it comes to power, uh, may consider scrapping it off and of course the COVID-19 levy. Is, is that feasible? Can they do that? And what could be the alternative to replace that? Well, government will have to look for other alternatives. But for me, I think I've heard both opposition, major opposition parties, the NDC and the MPP, all saying that when they come, uh, they will take it off. Uh, we wait to see how the political promises will be fulfilled. Um, I mean, indirect taxes, <laughs> there are too many in Ghana. Let's redirect our attention to the direct taxes. I was happy when the, uh, the GRE said that they are going to now come up with a very strong policy regarding the, the informal sector. It's an area where we have left it for too long. Um, the property tax, the minister also mentioned that in the, in the media budget. So if we're able to pull all this uh, other non-tax, I, I call it non-tax because we've not been too serious with those ones. If we focus on those ones, we will be able to balance the, our tax mix from the direct and the indirect taxes. 
Francis Timoboy, thanks so much for speaking to us on Business Life. We are indeed grateful having you on. Let's stay a while longer within the space because the electronic transaction levy initially projected to generate about 2 billion cities in the 2024 budget has significantly underperformed, raising um, only about 800 million cities. Now, former finance minister Seth Tekwe advocates for its removal, citing the 700 million cities shortfall. Now, during the media briefing on the 2024 media budget, Seth Tekwe emphasized the need to strengthen our um, revenue sources. So if you compare even the taxes of goods and services alone, not the total, you know, 36 billion, E11 is bringing only 6 billion. So it hasn't been the savior that is expected to be. For the half year, it has brought in only 898 million, despite significant resources devoted to it, against 2 billion, which was estimated 2.1 billion. So it tells you that the core tax instruments that Ghana has are the taxes on income and property, the taxes on goods, of which income tax, as well as corporate income tax, is the largest and then taxes on goods and services on which VAT is the largest and excise and then the international trade taxes these four are the core of our taxes and then these are the minor taxes I was talking about yield levy and the rest we have to grab them separately and even if you grab them separately some of them are so low that you still have to use the right step you know to explain them and we include Away from e-levy-related stories, Senior Manager Financial Advisory at Deloitte, Dennis Brown, is calling on the Bank of Ghana to find a sustainable way of ensuring that there is a constant inflow of dollars to increase the country's reserves. Now, speaking earlier on the marketplace, Dennis Brown said there has been a sustainable way of increasing inflows to improve the performance of the city and reduce the impact on the debt numbers. It's, I don't think moral suasion will be, you know, uh, 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 that significant, you know, as a solution. It might, it might uh, do certain things, particularly uh, related to individuals that hold dollars to benefit from it. But when it comes to business, the profit consideration is strong. And if, you know, the consideration is that if I'm not doing it, others will do it. Yeah. And of course, you know, I'll, I'll get outpriced out of the market. So I don't think moral suasion, you know, uh, will be that effective. I think that we should look more towards a, you know, a sustainable way of ensuring that there's constant inflows of uh, dollars to show up our reserves, you know, at any material point in time to absorb the demand shocks as and when they come. And the way we do that is to focus more on our import substitution policies, one, our exports drive, you know, growing our exports, as well as uh, our industrialization agenda. Our industrialization agenda goes hand in hand with our import substitution policy because then if you whip up your industrialization, you create industries to then uh, provide substitutes to the products that are imported. If they meet the quality and match the price of the foreign products, then you make progress in terms of them being, you know, desirable substitutes in the market. And then you can retain, you know, the hard end dollars that you would have gone to import uh, these products. This is the only way, but we also acknowledge that these ways that I've suggested are not, you know, that uh, you won't see the results that much within the short term. You would have to be consistent in your approach over a prolonged time to be able to see a tangible results going forward. Okay, so there's the phase that you have to invest in these things. It will have a certain gestation period, might run without any significant results for maybe two, three years, after which if you have, you have been consistent enough, then you begin to see you know, some results. And that's what we must look to, right, in the medium to long term. Now, the ARB Apex Bank says it is not fully satisfied with the release of some 1.5 billion cities by the government to pay customers affected by the banking sector cleanup exercise. President Okufuado in June 2024, you will recall, taxed the finance ministry to affect the disbursement of the funds to ease financial burden on the aggrieved customers. Board Chair of the ARB Apex Bank, Dr. Tony uh, Obin, says the amount released is inadequate as these unpaid funds continue to be a bane to the operations of the banks. He was speaking at the 22nd Annual General Meeting of the Bank in Kumase. The locked up funds, just as the monies that have been affected by the DDP, are funds owned by uh, uh, our customers. So um, it, it's worrying. It's affected the, it affected the profitability of some of the banks. We are excited to hear, even though not fully, fully 
uh, excited. We, we were happy to hear that government uh, has now released uh, 1.5 billion uh, CDs to, to pay part of the locked up funds. It is not enough. So as I speak with you, the rural banks have about 350 million cities uh, in locked up funds. This is huge, you know, for rural banks. If some of them, if you look at their profit, they are making one million uh, profit, two, three million profit and all that. Not, not huge profit. So if you have this big amount lock, locked up, do you know how much that locked up funds could be used to generate further further resources for the bank. So we, are, we still continue to appeal to government to understand that the rural banks, we really impact on the real economy. You know, there are, there are some banks, the big ones who are giving loans in, 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 you know, in mortgages and all that. We give loans for farmers, I mean to farmers, those who produce food for us to eat. We give loans to carpenters, those who make uh, chairs and tables for our children to write on. We give loans to small and medium uh, enterprises. We are, we are really the, the interface to the real sector of our economy. You're still watching Business Life. We've got more stories for you after this break. Hello again, good to see you. Global coffee house chain giant Starbucks is looking for a local partner to help access the Ghanaian market. The move is part of measures by the American multinational company to take advantage of the growing coffee industry in Ghana and its growing economic activities. Vice President of Global Food Products Research and Development at Starbucks, Ruby Abenga, disclosed this to Joy Business at the Kariska Supply Chain Business Forum and Exhibition Forum here in Accra. In Ghana, right, people like to spend. I've been in restaurants and we always see a lot of Ghanaians, the youth. You know, it seems they have a lot of money. So when it comes to affordability and all that, and I've been to other cafes that are not Starbucks, and I've seen people there. So I know the potential is there. But what I was also saying that when you want to uh, open cafes, you want to have that density when you're doing business. So your supply chain, you go from one, but if you have one and the other one somewhere, it, and these are perishable products, right? So we want to make sure it's fresh and all that. So the challenge is, yes, but how many can you open here? You know, it, we can still start because I've seen the, it's growing. I'm seeing lots of construction. I was talking to somebody that I've seen other sources like uh, Malcolm expanding. How are they doing that? Let's go and talk to them. How are they doing that? Because they only had one when I used to come here. And now we have it almost every. So others are doing it. So we want to talk to them. Is it really working? And then I uh, also said that it's not just Starbucks coming here. We need the part. We, we usually partner with what we call the licensee. So they also have to see that value in coming to Africa. So we can approach some of them, those in North Africa, what will take you, what will make it for you to want to invest in West Africa? Director of the Kariska Center at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Nathaniel Obuso, has emphasized the need for innovation in Africa's supply chain industry. According to him, there is the need to capture the supply side of economic activities to understand the cause of price changes. He spoke at the inaugural Supply Chain Business Forum and Exhibition here in Accra. The Center for Applied Research and Innovation in Supply Chain Africa, Kariska, held its inaugural Supply Chain Business Forum and Exhibition in Accra. This year's event focused on the collaboration between supply chain businesses and academia for economic transformation. Director of Kariska at the Kwame Krumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Nathaniel Boso, highlighted the importance of innovation in the supply chain industry. We are also collaborative with industry to come up with a new way of tracking economic activities across the country. And here, we are looking at transportation, we are looking at inventory, we are looking at warehousing. And we have a model that we believe truly capture the supply side of inflation. So, so when we are talking about inflation, is people are talking about the extent to which consumer expenditure is amplified as a result of cost of living, right? But we are looking at the supply side. To what extent that inefficiency in the supply chain system cause prices to go up? Executive Director of Kariska, Professor Dale Rogers, praised Ghana for its advanced human capital resources. The human capital here 
in Ghana and across Africa is second to none. You got, I mean, one of the great resources you have here are smart people and a lot of them. And, it, and it's, it's really the most important resource a place can have. We got first class people um, from KNUST working with me on an artificial intelligence project, applied supply chains, figure out pharmaceutical distribution. And, and you know, the, the, the kids that are here can do the exact same stuff that kids in Europe or the US or in China can. And so that's another, I think, important lesson and, and one of the things we want to get across. Vice President of Global Food Product at Starbucks, Ruby Amega, stressed the need for programs to enhance farmer welfare across the continent. Farming is very expensive and you can just see that some people tend to abandon farming and go somewhere else when there's more cash crop, more money to be made elsewhere. And so it's important for companies like Starbucks to make sure that the farmers are encouraged to stay in. And you also want to have that generation. So some of the challenges have been funding. Do we have the money to go into, especially with the young, the youth? So that's another area that they want to be able to support. And we also know when you look at farming, you say a lot of women. We don't talk about women, but women are highly involved. But we take a holistic approach in how we source our green coffee. The two-day forum was themed Navigating the Future of Supply Chains in Africa was a partnership between Cariska, Arizona State University, and supported by USAID. You're still watching Business Live. To our final story, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has launched its fourth edition of the Ghana Chamber Business Awards to celebrate the outstanding achievements of businesses in the country. The award slated for 27th September 2024. And Mark Bidwa is the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber and has been speaking to Joy Business in the following reports. The National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has launched its fourth Ghana Chamber Business Awards with a specific focus on a green economy which underscores the importance of sustainable development in ensuring a prosperous future for Ghana and the world at large. Speaking to Joy Business, Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber, Mark Bidwa Bwaji said, this year's awards seek to reward the resilience and agility of Ghanaian businesses who have persevered during the post-COVID era through to these challenging times. We have realized that businesses that survive under the COVID and they are still doing well, are those that moved from the normal way of doing things to using green economy. And that is where the world is going now. Every economy is looking at circular, how they can also, as part of making their money, also sustain the environment and sustain their business. That is the theme. So we launched the, the award today, and the award is actually on the 27th of September, uh, 2024 at the Accra International Conference Center. Chairman of the Fourth Chamber Business Awards, Prince Akwaku, highlighted the criteria for the various prospective nominees for the awards. We want to award as many companies in Ghana as possible. The issues or the crit eligibility criteria include thought leadership, it includes uh, employment, we want to see the number of people you've employed, we want to see your turnover. We also are looking at um, environmental management, which are... That's it for the bulletin. I am Pius Kojo Baka. For more stories, do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. I'll see you at 8 p.m. with Prime Business.